烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. So, I woke up early this morning, about one thirty. I did my meditation for an hour and a half, sitting in lotus posture. And I just couldn't stop thinking about this wonderful prayer made by the Vedas to the Universal Mother. So、uh, there's so much in this prayer. <laughs> It's so deep and so dense with meaning. I think I have to go、uh, go back and go over it a little bit again, so that you don't miss anything, because there's some real esoteric stuff there. They start off by saying, "Obeisances to the Devi, Mahamaya." Okay, Mahamaya means the illusion. The great illusion, the greatest illusion, and what is the greatest illusion? <laughs> That we exist, as we've gone over several times. But I don't know if anybody really got it. This manifestation, this universe, does not really exist. In fact, duality. Does not really exist. Duality is an illusion. Why? Because everything is Brahman. Sarva Kalvidam Brahma. That's what the Upanishads say. So if everything is Brahman, and Brahman is non-dual, there is no duality. The duality that we perceive is simply an appearance. There really is no distinctions, no differences.、Uh, everything is just one seamless whole, and cannot be broken up, cannot be discriminated into different things. And like I, I love to say, because this is one of the deepest and most powerful insights. That there's no duality between duality and non-duality. <laughs> so that right there completely shoots down the neo-Advaita idea, and it also destroys、uh, Buddha Buddhism. So what does it leave? <laughs> well, it leaves Shiva and Shakti. <laughs> Shiva and Shakti, that is、uh, Sada Shiva, not the Shiva that takes birth from Brahma's forehead in this universe, but the original Shiva. He is the Purusha. He is the Ishwara. He is Brahman, pure unconditioned awareness, non-objective consciousness. And she is the appearance of the duality of phenomena, phenomena, objects, consciousness, which is awareness with an object, duality. Then all kinds of space, time, motion, action, energy, and so on. That's what Shakti means: energy. To have energy, energy is a force that moves from one place to another, or changes something. And to have that, you have to have space, time. You know, all the physics has to be there. So she is all of that, and he is simply the observer, the witness, the enjoyer. And it's by his desire that she becomes. Everything. So then they they go on. She's the auspicious one. 
Why is she auspicious? Because by worshiping her and understanding her, meditating on her and serving her, the illusion is removed and we get to see things the way they really are. Now, a lot of people can't understand why this is a wonderful thing, but it is. <laughs> because that removes all of our uncertainty, all of our unknowing, all of our doubts, all of our misunderstandings. So this is a very auspicious because it leads to liberation. And what is liberation? Does it mean you disappear in a puff of smoke? <laughs> No, it means that you wake up to a higher state of consciousness in which you see things as they are. It's like waking up from a dream in the morning. You look back on your dreams and you say, oh boy, that was a weird one. <laughs> or a nice one or a bad one or whatever it was. But you're simply aware that that was a dream. Why was it a dream? It's temporary. It goes away in the morning when you wake up. And similarly, this so-called waking consciousness is also like that. And when we wake up to enlightenment, that also goes away. And we look back on it and say, oh, wow, that was a dream. Why? Because it's temporary. It has a beginning and an end. Even though it may be very long, Huh? a whole lifetime or many lifetimes, it still has a beginning and an end. And then the Vedas say that she's the creatrix. She, not Brahma, not Vishnu, the goddess, Shakti. Why? She is the force, the energy that gives these demigods the power to create. And when they're in touch with her, they're empowered and they can do their jobs. There's a story later on, or actually in the Tripura Sundari, uh, that in the beginning of the universe, the three, the, the three murtis, they're called, the Hindu trinity, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, they couldn't do their service. They, they, were, they knew they were supposed to create this universe, but they didn't know how. So they went to Devi and prayed. They went to her world, her planet, which exists uh, eternally, separate from the universe. And then she divided herself into three forms and married each of them and became their Shaktis. And once they had this Shakti, they could do their, their jobs. They could create, maintain, and destroy the universe. So, we bow down to thee who is beyond the gunas. What are the gunas? Sattva guna, the mode of goodness, Rajo guna, the mode of passion, and Tamo guna, the mode of ignorance. So these are the fundamental material qualities because they are qualities of karma. The sattva guna actions lead to rebirth in a higher state in the heavenly planets or in a superhuman uh, empowered body. The raja guna is the mode of passion, it's enjoyment of the material world that leads to rebirth in a human form or in heaven for some temporary enjoyment, and then you come back here again. And the tamoguna are animalistic activities that lead to rebirth in the animal species or in hell. So these three kinds of activities, three kinds of consciousness, three kinds of energy qualities are called the gunas, triguna. But she's beyond them. She's not subject to them. She is the ruler of them and the controller of the gunas. And then she calls, the Vedas call her the ruler of all beings. Why? 
because she's the controller of the gunas. And by the gunas, one's destiny is determined. So she's the ruler of all. And then they address her, O oh, mother. She's the mother. She gives birth to all. She lives with us. She lives within us as prana, as kundalini. Huh? The energy that has the power to create life. This is the mother. This is the goddess. This is Shakti. She's within us. She's with us every moment. And we are so grossly negligent to be unaware of her. And that's why we have problems. That's why we have worries. That's why all our efforts are, are failures. Huh? Because we're trying to do things in this world by our own will, by our own intelligence and energy, ignoring her who is the actual controller. So as soon as we uh, adjust our attitude and start recognizing her and seeing her in everything, then things get a lot easier and a lot more pleasant. So she is the prana, the life of all beings. She is buddhi, intelligence, lakshmi, wealth, shobha, beauty, Kshama, forgiveness, Shanti, peace, Shraddha, faith, Medha, intellect, Dhriti, fortitude, and Smriti, memory or recollection. So she is all these things. These are all Shaktis, subordinate or subsidiary Shaktis to her. So when someone has good qualities, they manifest all these things. Intelligence, memory, forgiveness, mercy, strength, wealth. Huh? These are all good qualities. And one who worships her and acknowledges her and brings her into, into his life as a center huh? becomes full of all these good qualities. Shanti, 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 peace. And then the esoteric part. She is the bindu, the dot that signifies the nasal termination of a word. It's also called visharga. So in Sanskrit, there are these mantras called bija mantras. Bija means seed. So, for example, in the, in the Guru Gayatri, Ayn Shri Guruve Namaha begins with Ayn. Ayn, what is the meaning of Ayn? <laughs> well, it's a bija, it's a seed. What is it the seed of? The tree of knowledge. So when we meditate on this mantra Ayn, then we get knowledge. There's one horny cat out there. <laughs> okay, okay, we, we heard you. <laughs> Ayn, Ayn, Yain, yeah. <laughs> See, everything is controlled by her. Everyone is controlled by her. That cat needed to hear that mantra, Ayn. So she showed up. Huh? And so you see how it works? The knowledge that's embedded in everything, she is the seed of that. And when we chant this mantra, this seed, it's like watering the seed, and so it grows. So when we chant the mantra Ayn, we get knowledge. That's why Ayn is the seed of the Guru Gayatri. Ayn Guru Devaya Vidmahe Pushpabanaya Dhimahi Tano Guru Prachodayat. See, so Ayn gives knowledge. Kling gives desires, bliss, 
Really, the fundamental desire is for happiness, bliss. So cling uh, is the root of the, the Kama Gayatri. Kling Kama Devaya Vidmehe Pushpabhanaya Dimehi Tanno Nangaha Prachodayat. Angaha means arrows. And we see in her picture, she's carrying these five arrows. Well, what are these five arrows? The five senses. So she is controlling these five senses, and these are the arrows of Cupid. She controls Cupid, so she controls everybody. <laughs> Through this uh, seed of desire, cling. When we meditate on it, then we get to understand all these things. And similarly, hring and shring and ang and all these, and sao, that's another very powerful seed. And ing, huh? so many seeds that are in her mantra, the Sodashi mantra. We did a series on Maha Sodashi mantra a little ways back. In the beginning of each of these videos, there's a card, a link to that series because it's so important. If you begin to chant and worship her with this Shodashi mantra, I'm, I'm promising you, your whole life will be transformed. I, I can't explain, I can't express, there aren't words to communicate how wonderful this thing is. If you chant this Shodashi mantra, huh, then everything becomes auspicious because you're invoking her presence in the most powerful way. So let's see what else she says. Oh, the uh, Vedas go on to say that thou art Gayatri. Gayatri, of course, is the Gayatri mantra, but Gayatri is also the matrika. The matrika is the matrix of 51 Sanskrit letters. And when they are chanted with the bindu, they have immense potency. So the Sanskrit alphabet is a, a, e, e, u, u, ri, ri, a, i, ao, ao, and so on. So if you want to chance this, ang, ang, ing, ing, ung, ung, ring, ring, and so on, see, and meditates on their meanings, and then places these mantras in the different parts of the body. Oh my God. You become completely empowered by the goddess. See, these are the secrets that the sages know for purifying the body and strengthening the mind, focusing the heart, and developing all these good qualities by watering these seeds. See, this is the secret part of yoga that nobody knows, that nobody teaches publicly because it's a deep tantric secret. See, this is how you become powerful and enlightened. So, Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung. <laughs>